yet to Hindu Jamikosa that always put up on your TV screens. As I said today, we are here at Thomas More University, Mechelen. This is Campus Divest. You can see behind me, students are chilling. It is so nice. This is what we do here at CUT. We are international students. We love education. We love internalization. We love going outside and spreading our own horizons and experiencing a new world. Belgium, it is so amazing and I have learned many, many things here at Thomas More University. Stay tuned on CUT TV. As I've said, I come along to call and watch that I the not know that always put up on your TV screen. And I say CUT TV, we all. This is student life here at Thomas More. We're entering the um, cafeteria. Entering the cafeteria, see beautiful people having their own meals and this is the cafeteria. So, good afternoon. Afternoon, how are you? I'm fine, and you? I'm great. Yes, can you introduce yourself? Well, I come along to the call and join to that I yet to end up the class that always goes up on your TV screens. Again, I'm Sanjay, I'm here yeah, at um, Thomas More Campus de Ham in Mexico. So, uh, you told me before that you work for local television. Can you tell me a bit more about it? Right, I work for CUT TV, which is a campus television, of which is a platform for students um, to express their campus life and to also give outside people experience of what is happening in our institution in the Central University of Technology. So it is a platform whereby we cover all academic processes um, and we get um, student life which is sports and all. That is what I do and I'm also a content producer for CBT TV and a presenter of Okay, so um, I know when I am filming you, you're good in front of the camera. Can you give us some tips and tricks to be a good, like someone who is good in front of the camera? Do you have any tips for us? Right, basically, being in front of the camera, it's not an easy thing, but you must have confidence. You must have confidence in what you're saying. You must convince the people that are watching because remember it is not about you as a presenter or the person that is conveying whatever message that you're conveying but it is about the receiver of the message so being good in front of the camera have confidence know your story and read 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 and make research because if ever you don't learn from other people that are doing this you won't know it so you have to check out other people that are already doing this so that you can have your own As I told you guys that I'm here at Thomas More University in Mechelen, Belgium. So now I'm having a gentleman here say, please tell my viewers at home, what is your name and where are you from and what course are you doing here? Uh, my name is Thomas Klerner. Uh, I am from Globig and I am studying media and entertainment business. So tell me, how is it like to be an international student here at Thomas More University? Uh, it's fun. There's a lot of uh, sorry. Um, it's fun. There's a lot of cool people here. Uh, a lot of friendly people here, and um, I like the, the course. So it's always interesting to study. Okay. So in what year are you in, and when are you finishing off? When are you going back home? I'm in my second year, so I need to do one more year, and then I'm going back home. Okay. Now, good luck with your your academic and endeavors. Thank you. Also studying media and entertainment business, um, a course which I've been taking two years now, and next year I hopefully graduate. Okay, so 
how do you find the culture and the way things are done here in Belgium, Mechelen? What can you say to our viewers and how is your experience here? My experience on this university? Yes. Um, it's a fun experience with yeah, a lot of work, of course, but my friends and the other people are very cool people and I enjoy being here, so, so it's a nice way to go to school. Okay, so tell me, how did you deal with the transitioning from your country to here? How, how did you manage it? Um, it was difficult, but after a while it was like home to me, so... Okay, now thank you for your time, man. A lecturer here at Thomas More. I teach uh, English related courses like general English, but also things like uh, public speaking. And um, <clears throat> I also oversee two of the international degrees international media and entertainment business and international communication and media. All right, so can you um, tell um, my viewers that? Um, your credentials, what, what are you qualified in, and how do you think, or what do you feel about the usage, the usage of social media in this dispensation or this age? Okay, so first, my credentials. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in uh, English education and a second bachelor's degree in communication. Uh, I have a master's in, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a master's in curriculum and program instruction, uh, all from the United States. Um, and I've been a teacher for, in combination between the United States and Belgium for over 30 years. Um, I teach courses related to writing for social media and using social media to develop campaigns and things like that for our communication students and also for our, our media and entertainment business students. Um, and I was a teacher educator for a number of years before I moved over to the School of Media here at Thomas More. So those are my credentials. In terms of uh, social media and language, um, Obviously, there is a very distinct um, language that's used on the different platforms and channels of social media. So what you write on Facebook, which allows for longer, uh, more detailed posts, is extremely more difficult, is, is extremely different than, let's say, what you write on Twitter. And then things like Instagram are totally different from both. So in terms of construction, having a full understanding of uh, taking language and breaking it down and making it more concise into specific words, specific concepts, then um, yeah, so it, it can be very, very useful for getting kids to, getting students to, um, to summarize, to paraphrase, things like that. So those, those types of skills which we often use in academic writing can be applied to uh, social media along with uh, skills of persuasion and things like that which uh, talk about how to encourage your audience to do what it is you want them to do. Um, in terms of learning a language from Facebook, I think that's more um, varied. Okay, let's talk about um when it comes to the way people use, particularly students or learners, um, the way they use language on social media, what do you, how, how, according to your knowledge, how does it affect their academic um, writing? Based maybe, since when you're dealing with English, how does it, it impact their academic writing? Because the style that they use let's say for example on Facebook it's not um, the formal style that they're using on academics so what do you think um, is the relation or how does it impact them on their academics? Um, I think that the biggest impact on their uh, academics tends to be the level of vocabulary the level of vocabulary of the, the basic user of social media channels is extremely low. 
uh, therefore um, getting students to find alternative words, find uh, synonyms, use different words, different metaphoric uh, words for literal meanings is much more difficult uh, nowadays because the students are so focused on writing just you know what's going on in their life right now or uh, a reaction to something without it being critical okay There's not much thought into it so yeah. so vocabulary is one um, the second is critical analysis they, they don't really think it's just a reaction it's just a reaction yeah and then the third tends to be um, sometimes a sentence structure yes which like is that. which is really really a problem because on social media they're using what they call social media speak mm -hmm. like maybe facebook speak whereby you find that um they are using certain jargons um let's say for instance they they shortening the words mm -hmm. for example like your lol which is yeah. laughing out loud yeah. um you find that at most of the time that they um because they use their social media every time every like every second so when it comes to them writing um the academic um writing it becomes a problem so let's talk about um what do you think can be done maybe to try and reduce the degrading of language when it comes to the way it is used on social media I think the first thing that needs to be done is the students uh, need to understand that there is a true difference between writing on social media and writing in an academic setting. So they, they need to totally understand the difference between formal and informal writing, uh, number one. They need to understand audience and purpose, number two. Sometimes these things have been lost in the last few years. They They're constantly writing for one audience and they're friends only, so sometimes when they're writing an academic paper, they still think they're writing only for their friends instead of for an academic community, which is a problem. Um, we need to go back to teaching basic sentence structure. We need to go back to teaching basic punctuation and things like that. They seem to be a lost or some students do notice stuff as we get them to delve more into academic reading and things like that, but it's not enough to overcome some of the conventions. Plus, they need to learn how to emote without uh, emojicons, because it just doesn't happen. So how can emotions and, and that play into a piece of writing without it becoming the piece of writing? Because academic writing is usually devoid of specific emotions, but yet something can be emotional, and they, they don't know how to describe it as such. Okay. Um, and then I think going back to teaching academic vocabulary, um, I think, too, it's a lost piece yeah. that needs to be talked about. Yeah. So let's talk about um, language and um, media, media at large, like your television and all. How significant is the value um, of language? What how how people should acknowledge the usage of language, be it French, be it Dutch, be it Isikosa, be it um, Isizulu, be it Isisutu. How people should um, acknowledge and appreciate language because I feel like, yes, people that are in these um, social medias, they are in all sorts of media, but they don't appreciate language. How important is language? Uh, well, it's, it's the cornerstone of everything that we do in both the entertainment and media program and in the international communication and um, media program. Language is the cornerstone of everything from, from factual language of press releases to persuasive language of sales folders and things like that. Um, I, I don't think that students, A, have a feel for language much anymore. So uh, language has become... Yeah, in some cases, boring. To, they think it's boring, so so they don't have a feel for the grammar. They don't have a feel for the vocabulary. They don't, mm -mm -mm. Have, a, they don't have an ear anymore for hearing, even though they they hear it all the time uh, in the media. They they don't. Their ear is not trained to yeah. pick these things up. Um, and I think that there is a lack of of truly uh, noticing. Yeah. They they may be watching a television program and mm. pick up on a catchphrase or something, but 
that's fine and that, that can be useful, mm -hmm. but there's lots of language in a program um, that they, they ignore and they miss because mm -hmm. they're just not truly paying attention to the mm -hmm. nuance of the language and what it can do for you. And then when they come to us, uh, they have to deal with the nuance of language and mm -hmm. it can be very, very difficult for them finding the right word to go into a, a copy on an advertisement or something like that mm -hmm. uh, can be very, very difficult because they just want to use the first word that pops into their head. Yeah. And it doesn't have the same uh, connotation or denotation yeah. that another word would have. So getting them to appreciate language, so having them look at uh, good examples of language that are out there, and there's lots of good examples out there, and then um, emulating those styles can be very, very helpful. Yeah. So do you think that um, looking at other languages, do you think that English language is oppressing these other uh, languages when it comes to um, w its usage? Do you think other languages um, are appreciated, are less appreciated, and English is um, the key language that is being used everywhere? Well, um, there's no doubt that language English is the ling lingua franca of most of the world. Um, that won't always be the case. So, um, I, I don't know. I mean, um, students tend to learn, at least here in Belgium, they tend to learn English uh, easier than they do uh, some other languages. Um, but again, I, I don't think that they appreciate the nuance of the language, but I, 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 don't, I don't think that English has oppressed other yeah. languages. I think other languages, for example, a Spanish, yeah. uh, is still a very sought after language mm -mm -mm -mm. by many students, as is Chinese. Okay. Um, I, yeah, will smaller language uh, individual languages with less speakers, will they tend to diminish? Possibly, but that could have happened whether English was the lingua franca or French was the lingua franca or some other language was the lingua franca. Uh, as the world becomes more global, mm. there's going to be more reliance on one or two specific global languages. And in, in 20 years or so, what will that be? I'm not too sure. Yeah. Might it be English? It's, it's still very possible. Yeah. But it'll be something else as well. Everybody will be uh, bilingual, let's say, in English, Chinese. Yeah. So, um, since you are not from this, um, I would say, millennium um, generation, you're from the other generation, right? So, the usage of language during your time compared to now, do you think that, how do you weigh it? How do you compare it? Yeah, I think that the usage uh, nowadays has become more simple. Okay. Um, whether that's due to social media, whether that's due to the dumbing down of the media, I'm mm. not sure. Uh, but it, I, I, I do know that students don't have the, 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 the breadth of vocabulary that, that they had when, when I was growing up. I believe that um, my generation had a, at their age, had a much larger vocabulary yeah, yeah. than they do now. Um, we okay, let's let, let's let's. Start. But what makes you think that um, this generation right now has a lesser vocabulary than your generation? What are the as, uh, the factors, maybe? Just look at look at uh, if you if you do a. Uh, an analysis of social media posts, mm -mm 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 -mm. you're not talking about a, a wide vocabulary of all the posts done in English. Okay. Um, if you were to do, uh, let's say, do a corporate linguistic study mm -hmm. of social media, I'm, I'm sure that you're going to find that there's a very limited uh, vocabulary within social media posts. Yeah. Part of that's due to social media posts, but that's also partly due to the fact that um, students, who are our main user of social media, just they don't have the vocabulary and um, since while I'm dealing with um, language and international communications and media, mm -hmm. 
Um, I'm from South Africa, right? From the Central University of Technology, Valcom campus. What message, um, because I do believe that you are from a total different world from where I'm from. Yeah, true. And then probably from your own research or from your own reading, being curious with the world, what is happening around you, you have read a bit about our country. So what message would you send to the citizens of South Africa in terms of them being um, motivated to make it in life in terms of them, especially the younger generation, in terms of them um, using every opportunity that is being presented to them in this time? Um, <clears throat> well, I, I think the most important thing uh, for anybody in any country in the world, um, but to the people in South Africa as well, is hold on to your culture. Uh, even though we all may speak uh, the same language down the road, in this case you and I speaking English, our cultures and our cultural identities are different, and that that is very, very important, and that affects the way we do things, and, and that makes all of us better people for, for the fact that we're sharing culture at the same time that we're speaking. I would say that uh, for people in South Africa, if, uh, yeah, they should do things similar to what you're doing, um, they should, uh, you know, look beyond the borders, um, you know, come to Europe, go to America if that's possible, or Canada, um, or any other country in the world, the Middle East as well, and, and explore um, things that are, are very, very different. So we know that there is a, uh, a difference between South Africa and there's a difference between Belgium. They're very two different types of countries. So you coming here and experiencing life in Belgium for a period of four or six months, that's to your advantage, even if your only uh, objective is to go back to South Africa and put it into place there. I've noticed with our students, this is why in our one program, we, our students have to do an international internship in another country um, outside of Belgium. Um, I had one student just come back from London, one student come back from LA. Their, their attitudes, their approaches have changed completely because of their experience in these two cities. And I had a third student come back from Ghana um, and he was very, very moved by his experience uh, to the point where he may want to go back, maybe not to live forever, but to work for a period of time and to give back to a community that gave him so much during his uh, six months there. So I think those types of things can only uh, help people and I would encourage South Africans to explore beyond their borders, explore beyond their continent, uh, other, other worlds, other cultures, and then take that back to South Africa and assimilate what you, what you think is worthy and don't assimilate the other stuff. So um, I think that's the only way that we become a more uh, global society and that's exactly where we are. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Social media has affected writing skills, language skills. The one thing they've done is brought the world together. together. Yeah. No say thank you for your time no as we are wrapping it up ikamalamke njongobasendi chilo ke kuxolani mqwathi kadla yedwa into domxhosa that always pulls up on your tv screens ke namhlanje i had an opportunity of conversing and having a conversation with um, one of the lecturers at Thomas More University in Belgium i hope this video and this clip will give you more information about language and social media and all the internalization and CUT TV? We own. Uh, CUT TV? We own. Yes. <laughs>